Hey ya folks, how's it going? I was really fortunate to be sent a PDF copy of today's game. I really liked what I saw on the PDF, so I went ahead and ordered a physical copy, just so I could show it off a bit better to you guys. This is Explorers by Tom Vogt and Not Very Professional Games. Explorers has a few pieces of lore that set the scene. A long time ago, while humanity was exploring the stars, subspace travel was discovered. At first, these jump gates were very delicate and inaccurate. Now, thanks to advancements in technology, humans have reached the outer regions of space in what is known as the Human Empire. The humans aren't the ones doing the exploring or the colonizing, though. In this game, player characters are clones of humans. Clones are considered inferior and expendable. Most of these missions are about setting up beacons on new planets to further human colonization. Of course, there might be secondary goals or something might go wrong too. Clones do as they're told because otherwise their entire line will be wiped out. These are pretty heavy themes which illustrate the level of risk and danger that player characters are going to experience. Explorers uses opposed rolls with a dice pool. Players who want to perform an action will roll a pool of d10s. This pool could be contributed to their skills, perhaps what weapons they're using if it's an attack roll, or some other factor that might be present. The Game Master will then roll a difficulty pool. The results and whether or not it is a success for the players will depend on what the dice do. Weapons in this game are roughly categorized into melee and ranged. And for such a small game, there is a fair amount of variation in the styles and the effects of different weapons. For example, some weapons will do more kinetic damage, like your traditional bullet. Other weapons will do more energy damage. This is things like laser damage, plasma, or radiation. Attack rolls for this game are performed simultaneously. Meaning in combat, the players declare what they want to do, they roll their dice, the GM rolls the dice, and then everything is resolved from there. There are also advanced rules in this book that cover some of the situations that the basic rules don't. Character creation for this game is pretty freeform. Players get 20 points to distribute among the skills as they please. The more points you have, the better at a skill you are. The more missions a character goes on, the more mission credits they gain. These can be used to improve skills or to gain surgical improvements that can be installed into their clone. Death isn't really a concern for the clones though. If they die on a mission, a version of themselves will appear which is completely the same with all of the memories except for the one of the mission that they died on. If a player wishes to change character, that's absolutely possible through other means. This book has a lot of really useful resources available to run the game. This book comes with PDFs, two cards, some digital tools that you can use to run the game, and some paper alternatives. The resources section has a lot of things to make running a game easy. I really appreciate that there is a chapter breaking down the statistical analysis of the dice pooling mechanic. I was never really good at maths at school, and I think if I just discovered tabletop role-playing games sooner, I would have taken more of an interest in improving. This book also comes with some adventures for the Game Master to run if inventing your own seems too intimidating to start. There are of course some really good guidelines on how to create your own planet to run a mission on. If a supplement was published for this book, I think it'd be really exciting if it had some planets for the players to have missions on and explore. The missions that are included in the book demonstrate the creator's fantastic imagination and I would just like to see more. There isn't a lot of artwork included in this book. There are some 3D renderings of some of the places that are found in the pre-written missions. And that's totally fine, not every creator has the resources to include a lot of artwork into their tabletop role-playing game. Everything is really well set out in this book and the bits of art that are there are interesting and I really love the choice to use chapter headings with a space theme. I paid around $15 for this book, including shipping, which is just a bargain. I really think this is a solid science fiction tabletop role-playing game. 
The universe it depicts is not a wholly optimistic one, but I think it's a very interesting one. I think the mechanics are approachable with just a little bit of complexity to keep everyone interested. I think if you pitched the concept of this game to your group and they liked the sound of it, it would absolutely be one that I would pull out for multiple campaigns. I'm really glad that my attention was brought to this game. I tend to get overwhelmed when looking at science fiction games and I'm not always sure what I want to buy. But what do you look for in a science fiction game? Do let me know in a comment down below. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing. It all just encourages me to keep going. I hope you're all well and I look forward to seeing you next time at the gaming table. Bye!